to my now we uh, allocated $20,000 for the uh, festival and now we have a full banner campaign with Farmers Market. Right, so um, Devin has been looking into uh, some opportunities with our full banners. We had thought, I think we had a conversation last meeting or the one before about keeping them up, but we found out that from Amgra, who does the um, whole banner permits for us that um, they uh, that our, our fees actually we would have to pay two thousand dollars effectively now to um, keep those sunset and vine whole banners up for another year and those whole banners were actually installed in 2012 so they are becoming a bit ragged around the edges mm -hmm. so we are recommending not doing that and kind of um, <coughs> putting those to rest. And right now, Devin is working with um, the Hollywood Farmers Market on an idea uh, because uh, Hollywood Farmers Market is celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. You heard about that. They came to the meeting last yes. year. Mm -hmm. And we realized that the Sunset and Vine Bid is celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. Oh. So, uh, so we need to kind of think about celebrating that. Um, so one of the ideas that Devin had would be to collaborate with the Hollywood Farmers Market, all these capsules around, to seek sponsored pole banners, which would be no cost to either organization, but it allows um, corporate brands to be affixed to the uh, pole banners um, and then placed throughout the district that would both highlight the 25th anniversary of the Farmers Market, the 10th anniversary of the Sunset and Light Bid. So he's going to work with the Sunset, I mean the uh, Hollywood Farmers Market folks to see if there's interest in that and, you know, think about who you could possibly approach as sponsors and bring this idea back to you. But in the meantime, unless someone feels that we should um, keep those other pole banners up, um, we're going to recommend that we not apply for a renewal permit. As far as not applying for a renewal permit, um, we talked about it being kind of a placeholder. Uh, someone can definitely, some, yeah. Someone else can come in and take them. Right. If we don't Potentially. Need. Right. But they, they take them in three month increments, uh, I think three to six month increments. And so w one, if we can pull something like this off here, we would then apply for when the polls <coughs> become available again. Okay. And, um, and also, uh, Someone could like Pantages, you see there's pole yeah. banners out there right now. Mm -hmm. Those tend to go up and down based on a particular sure. show. But you're not likely to see people come in and do pole banners for a year or two because that's typically a bid because right. everything else is usually tied to right. some kind of promotion. Okay. You know, sure. Carrie, I like this idea because I think that there's so many pole banners everywhere that unless you have important information that's current, I think it all just kind of it, it blends back around. Yeah, 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 definitely. So um, I don't know that that is, um, um, you know, there's no, there's no, nothing to ask you to do or approve right no, now. There's no money. Um, again, if you, unless oh, yeah. someone yeah. wants to keep the old ones up. So if we want to do this, we need to keep the old one up. No, you need no. To pay this no, 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 no. We just we can do without it. So we're gonna have the poll available by May. What is it, May or June? I or maybe May. other polls. 
I mean, there's lots of polls. How many polls we want to do? I don't know yet. We're going to have to cross it out. There's still a lot of this work. It was like a 20 something we did. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of work we have to do to even see if we can find sponsors to do it. So we can't guarantee that we even can do this idea, but it's the idea that we're going to discuss with the farmers market. But I'm in favor of saving the 2000 on something that should we move it? Um, I don't think it needs to be moved. Right. I, I'm, I'm just I'm, in, I'm informing you, and nobody is jumping on the board and saying keep it again. No, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Do we move on to Street K? Chase is not here. Yeah, Chase uh, got stuck in a mandatory staff retreat, so he's oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. yeah. We changed to his chair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I will uh, turn your attention to this flyer in your packet. Uh, Melissa left already, but I wanted to give a big thanks to her and the Amoeba team for hosting this event. It's tomorrow at 6 o'clock. This is what we're calling a... a a preview of the artwork that's going to be installed on the utility boxes on Friday. Um, so this event, we're actually going to be uh, hanging up all of the original canvas artwork that the artist created. So these are the original uh, paintings that were uh, digitalized and printed on the vinyl that's going to be installed. At Amoeba. At, at Amoeba, yeah. So it's going to be kind of like an art tomorrow, exhibit. Yeah, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Uh, we also have two of the bands um, that are on the utility boxes are going to be performing, Drinking, Flo uh, Drinking Flowers and Winter. So it's gonna be kind of a fun, free community show. Um, and we'll have a little a guide for all of the, the, the pieces, descriptions of the work, descriptions of the projects, uh, things like that. So if you guys can make it out and stop by, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, the next page, this is uh, just an update on the work that Haynes & Co. has been doing uh, in terms of pitching this project to the media. So you can see we've got quite a few outlets confirmed who have picked up this event and have already uh, published it on their, their news outlets. So um, we've got a couple that are pending and many that have been submitted. So we're hoping that these guys will come out to this event and then possibly uh, pitch another story once the project is actually complete. So Friday they go up? Friday they go up, yep. It's going to take a couple of days to install all 10, um, but they should be done by uh, the end of next week for sure. Do you have a logo of the sunset? We sure do, yeah. yeah. We have a logo on the yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you. So that's my update on that. The next update is in regards to our LA Moss project at Selma uh, and Ibar. So we've got a target uh, install date of April 25th. Uh, we are trying to coincide the completion of the installation with the 25th uh, <clears throat> anniversary of the farmer's market, which is going to be on May 1st. We're doing a, a big celebration to, um, to honor that. So on that day, um, we will be starting our community feedback process. Okay. Uh, so LA Moss right now is working on that strategy, coming up with the types of questions that we want to ask the community, um, the type of uh, feedback that we want to hear, um, things like that. So once we have a, a draft of that, of that survey, we'll be running that through the Streetscape Committee to make sure we are going to get the, the data that we want uh, to apply for, for other placemaking projects. Um, and in addition to the, the survey, which is kind of the physical inter interactive um, touch, they're gonna do a standalone, uh, a design component that can stand by itself when there's not a physical presence there. So it might be you know a board that people can leave comments or notes on, uh, things like that, just so we can extend the period of, of time we have to, to get feedback on, on this project. So, uh, so we're working on that, and then um, we also will be working with Haynes & Co. to do a, a similar media pitch as they did for the utility boxes. So, uh, working on that as well. Then I will uh, talk over here to the monitor. A quick update on the landscaping project. There's not much to report, but um, I'll give you a quick overview of the work that's been done already. I 
little hand-drawn map here. So this is just showing uh, the work that um, we're, we're working on uh, for the tree well landscaping project. The yellow areas are all of the tree wells that are primed for planting. So uh, we're ready to go with installing plants in those wells. Um, I just highlighted the areas that we had some, uh, some brick and concrete to remove. Um, so on the north, uh, north side of Sunset here, we've already completed that work. We've removed the concrete and the bricks. Um, and then we also have got two little special areas that uh, I wanted to work on. Uh, I call it the mutant tree and uh, an empty tree well. So here's just some photos. It's a little hard to see, but we cleaned up this tree, uh, did some pruning, removed the concrete that was uh, around the, the base of the tree. Um, same deal here, it's now free of, um, of any obstructions. Uh, same deal here, and then we uh, planted a new palm uh, over on the uh, east side of Coenga by the Jack in the Box. So um, the next step for this, we are going to be um, planting some test tree wells over on Coenga just to see how the plants do with the foot traffic. And once we find the right selection of plants, then we'll be replicating that in um, all of these other areas. Who helps you with the maintenance? So that's our, our chemistry maintenance team. Yeah, we have a landscaper on duty. Okay, and then the last thing, um, there's a budget handout in your packet. It just shows um, some of the projects that we have earmarked. Uh, we had our first committee meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we tried to figure out some of the uh, key projects that we wanted to take on this year. Um, so one of the big ones that came up was gateway signage, doing something, you know, welcome to Hollywood or welcome to the Sunset and Vine District. Um, so that's an idea that we're pushing for. Also, this idea of doing string lights uh, keeps coming up, possibly on Coenga or an area that there's a lot of uh, pedestrian foot traffic. So that's something that we're currently researching. And then again, just trying to push this public art um, idea and doing some more murals uh, throughout the neighborhood. Uh, and then the last thing that uh, we may uh, be pulling some money from in the, the beautification budget if we move forward would be um, this new uh, operations management software. So some uh, software to help us track all of our, uh, our, all of our maintenance tasks. So um, once we kind of uh, jump into those projects, we'll be bringing more updates to the board. That's all I have, if there's uh, any uh, questions. Mm -hmm. I uh, saw some magnolia recently planted on Selma between Woodhawks. Is that our friends? On Wilcox. No, in summer, uh, between Wilcox and Coenga, Mama Shelter, somewhere over there. Um, those magnolia. Those are, those were us. Uh, we, but those were planted a while ago. What? Yeah, we have the, the green tree. What is that green plastic? Yeah, they're called tree gators. It's that? a slow watering system. Um, it just helps the roots absorb the water uh, before it runs off onto the sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. But that was doing very well. Too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. No, what is trash can flat? Oh, so those are the um, the signs that have our logos, district logos on them, that are on the trash cans. Are we going to get them for the planters? Yes, they will also go on the planters, yes. Because we will think that we are setting up on the planters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want credit for it. Yeah. Oh, and I, I should also say we uh, placed that order for the 16 planters that were approved at the last board meeting. Okay. So, should so be getting those on the back. <coughs> very nice. Right. It, I think it looks great. It looks great. Yeah. That's something yeah. like mine. Yeah. 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 They look awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Matthew, are the committee, the streetscape committee meetings moving from Friday at 9.30 to Wednesday at 8 a.m.? Yes. You should not get the invite. It's a fourth, right, a fourth Wednesday now. No. I maybe I missed you on that list. Sorry, I'll send it over yeah. to you. Wednesdays, I can't. You cannot do Wednesdays at all. Not in the morning. Okay, we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Then I'll, I'll follow up with you. Joint security committee. We don't have a meeting last month.
And the one thing I'm going to say we're going to talk about tomorrow is we're going to uh, allocate some time on the agenda to start um, surfacing some conversations about the bid renewal, um, about the, what the security program might look like in the new bid, uh, because you know these are things that are not decided quickly, and we want you all to be thinking about this. So um, the questions that I'm going to ask tomorrow are these. Um, if money was not an object and you had the ability to design the optimal service array to serve the assessment paying property owners in the two bids, what would the ideal security program look like? So just sky is the limit and then we'll work backwards. Um, in your opinion, how has the mission of the bid security and public safety program evolved over time? And are there elements of the former program you would want to see returned? And this would be a good question for anyone who's been around for a long time to respond to, because it, it has evolved in 20 years. It is different than it was to begin with. Um, would there be a different way to determine zones of benefit in the new bid, where service deliver, delivery fluctuates in different parts of the district and the assessment changes accordingly? So as you know, there are at least three zones of benefit in the sunset bid, and it's very easy to define uh, from a maintenance standpoint that zone three will get less pressure washing in zone one, and there's not as many trash cans on certain streets as others. But in a, in a security context, what does that look like? And you know, one of the philosophical discussions here is that, and some of you who've been around for a while remember we used to talk about, oh, we should have a, like a nightclub zone, that if a building had a nightclub, they should be paying more into security because it impacts the neighborhood. But interestingly enough, I mean, the argument against that is that businesses do not stay the same over time. Mm -hmm. And now you see there's been so many nightclubs that have closed down in the last five years that that, that assessment would not work. <coughs> so we do have like an alley assessment in the Hollywood bid where everyone who is on an alley pays a rear frontage assessment along their alley footage. But, you know, so we could brainstorm about are there other things that we could uh, look at in, in terms of how security expenses and benefits would be parsed uh, in the new bid. Um, is there a benefit to merging the two bids in the new chapter? What are the pros and cons of doing that? Both bids are expiring at the exact same time, and we either, um, and this is a decision that you all are gonna have to make probably no later than about Thanksgiving. Um, do we form one bid, you know, uh, that has maybe multiple zones of benefit because it is, it is rather big? Uh, and you have different things happening down at Santa Monica and Vine as compared to Hollywood and Highland? Or do we continue to have two bids? And in that context, there are some boundary things we wanna think about. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about um, suns, uh, Sunset and Highland, you know, where Musicians Institute is actually expanding their campus now to Sunset and Highland, uh, the northeast corner. Um, that mall? That mall. Oh, that's that's nice. going to become their classrooms. <coughs> so MI is creating like a campus experience that would go from Hollywood Boulevard to Sunset and, and hug um, the good portion of Highland. So uh, right now the Sunset bid ends at Casill and the Hollywood bid ends at Selma. So there's that kind of no man's land right there around Sunset and Highland. What do we do with that? Um, and then, you know, there's other little nooks and crannies. So we're gonna have to start thinking about that. Also, you know, do we eliminate Helen Bernstein High School um, because they're not paying the full amount and just end the bid at Van Ness, which is a possibility. Um, and then finally, um, Given the complications of addressing the challenges of the homeless population and the increasing evidence of, the, of people in the city suffering from untreated mental illness, are there program components you would want to see incorporated into the new bid? And there are bids in this country who actually do have like criminal <coughs> social workers on staff or yeah, so things like that. So tomorrow, I just think it's going to be an interesting conversation. We just start. We have to start to think about the future now and. Um, you know, when you renew this bid, whether it's a merge <coughs> bid or separate bids, it can be for three years, five years, or 10 years. But if it's 10 years, we're locked in for a long time. Right. And so these decisions are really important right now. <coughs> so we're gonna, that's what we're gonna focus on with the security. I like one bid. Thank you. Well, actually,
actually what the staff and I are going to do, we, we, um, we know that it's hard to get your mind around, you know, this is, you guys all have your jobs, your businesses, you know, you go, you come back, you spend a couple hours here, you go back again, and we're here every day, you know, dealing with this is what we pay us to do. So we're going to take a half a day or whatever and go off and design our recommendation. Like, so if, if we had the magic wand and, and, you know, you said, what do you think we should do? We're going to come back with the ideal bid and then let you back back away from it. Say, no, 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 that's not going to work. Let's change this. But we just thought we would go ahead and give you something to react to because it's really hard, I think, for you guys to ideate what the possibilities are. And we're not even sure what we're going to come up with. <coughs> we're going to spend. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, uh, last time we were asking, we were talking about uh, how uh, it's modernize how they have more technology mm -hmm. uh, for example as far as security but also as a team uh, you know where there's a problem you know there's a lot of technology now that helps you do that so I'm sure there's going to be some other uh, sources of info that will tell us what is the best thing to do with two kids but definitely yeah I'm sure if Technology comes in, I'm sure we're gonna to have to redraw a lot of stuff. I think it'll be better uh, <clears throat> having one bit and one, you know. I yeah. think it could be run better at once. If you have to worry just on one, not having two meeting of this, two meeting of everything. Yeah, and that's what Matthew was referencing a minute ago. We were blown away when we went to the IPA conference in San Francisco where technology is, um, helping bids manage all the services that are provided by GPS and you know every time something is painted graffiti it, it, it gets tracked. Right now we're doing manual hashtag pieces of paper. You know, it's like very 19th century. So you're right there's um, uh, we, we have to kind of get ahead of the curve on what the possibilities are to be more efficient. And, Karen, and it, it wasn't that an issue of the difference between the streets I mean, the um, Street and, and they don't modernize. Street are not doing. Except the other guy also had other issues that he didn't want to do yeah. either. But the technology for them is out there and being used for years. So right, we have to bring it to them. Okay. Yeah. To learn and we thought this is what we want and we provide it. Yeah. Yeah, we know we're behind the ball in that one. My point on bid size is as bids get bigger, they get more administrative. And they're less, sort of, there's less boots on the ground doing stuff, I find. Um, it's sort of like corporations, as corporate bid. organizations get bigger, mm -hmm. there's more layers of just people managing things and less people just doing things. Mm -hmm. So I would have, my immediate reaction would have some, a bit of fear on that. Mm -hmm. And then in a, on a point of view of our property, we're way on the eastern end, where and a lot of the issues are in the middle. So we get, I think what happens if, if essentially if it's one big, big one, then we end up sort of, I think what happens, left out, the, not left out, but you're sort of more on the fringe than in the middle. Okay. Well, and also that's where the zones of benefit, I think discussion has to happen because obviously less things happen at the corner of Van Ness and Sunset than Hollywood and Highland. That's right. On, on every front, paramedics, police, bid patrol, tourism, DOT, you name it. So um, we have to find a way to measure the nexus between the services delivered and the payment received. That's right. Um, However, the, well, the business injury, the people who are, are going to be in business in the media and entertainment sector, is increasing on the eastern end, not in the middle. Yep, that's true. And the thing is, there's more money they're spending on their own stuff, but still, it's important that, that the bid has a role. It may not be as big, but it's all the role there. And the personality of the two bids is different. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think you have done a good job of making efficiencies out of the management of it, because we do have a combined uh, streetscape, combined security, security um, committees combined, mm -hmm. yeah. but, mm -hmm. but, but 
but still the personalities of our kids are, are still very different mm -hmm. from what mm -hmm. one another needs. You know, Carol, I'm going to say something as quick as what you just said. Yeah, I think it's important. I think what you do have this little mini offsite. The first thing you should do is figure out what's what's the object, object this is like when I do mergers, I do a lot of mergers and acquisitions, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, a lot of CEOs, they merge companies to do something and then they don't have any measurable measurable benefit. So you go and make a big reorganization and it takes like a year and it's painful. And then it's like, what did we get out of it? What did we achieve? What did you, there should be some measurable yeah, we about that. for the community, yeah. not for the organization, yeah. as a result of it. So I, that would be my challenge is what do you, if, there's, if somehow we can be better at security, better at maintenance, better at stabilizing the community and helping the businesses, which is what it's all about, and people who are around it. I think you need to figure out what does, how, how, how does that organization help it? Yeah. If it doesn't help it, then it's not worth doing it. Yeah, and right now we are efficiently yeah. going through committees mm -hmm. and combining them. Because so, I think the point of making is people automatically think bigger is better, and it's not necessarily it's not necessarily true. Yeah. Are there duplicated processes by having right. two bids? I mean, is there any scale economies that would be right? Related? That would be another question. I so think you can achieve a lot of the economies of scale. Yeah. You know, we share we share the office, we share the copy machine. You know, all those. The, the, you share the staff. Um, we have achieved a lot of those economies, and everything is outsourced. Like this is a very small staff to deal with this many. We have so many outsourced vendors. Um, although one of the things we did talk about was uh, maybe in the new bid we would have the security director inside as an employee because right now we're paying money plus overhead to our maintenance, our security vendor or our maintenance vendor to have the supervision mm -hmm. paid for by the vendor, and we don't have that other body in the house. And a lot of the larger bids do have like a a person who does the security operations and so it's almost like a wash for the money or even maybe you're saving money because you're paying for the corporate overhead for like Andrews or Queen Street and the supervisor is right. external yeah. to us. So it costs more if we have it. It costs less if it was in the no, But it's not still over has hands. an internal one just like we have a joint committee mm -hmm. for but the and But you'd have, it would not be your employee and you would not have. So Steve is our security director, but he, is, he has an Andrews paycheck. Right. So we're paying Andrews plus overhead. But just like you are for working for both of us, couldn't that person work for both of us also? Right, but I'm talking about the difference between having them in as an employee as opposed to a vendor contractor. As an employee of HPOA. H yeah, right. Um, if you're saving money if you bring them in and I mean they by virtue of having let's say six or seven people on staff as opposed to five you've got you, you can share more workload mm -hmm. but couldn't you do that anyway can't you do that now well no because no. he's external he is we'll have to do it we'll have to do a fiscal yeah I, guess I, 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 I think you have to really think about those objectives because I don't think the objective is to save money I think the objective is to be more impactful in either through speed or through what, what in some some ways. So I think there's lots of things. I think it's a really important. I'm glad you said what you said about coming up in November. It's it is a, it's something you need to start now. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about because there's a lot of strategic decisions to be made. I think there's a lot of a lot of discussion we can provide. I think there's a lot of feedback we can provide after you come back with some of your ideas. Yeah. yeah. Let you react to those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We the, All the good, not all, but most of the good news in Hollywood right now is happening in the Sunset Grid. Mm -hmm. um, think about it. The mm -hmm. development, the jobs, the housing, the, the great tenants that are being signed. And Hollywood is a little bit, you know, there's not as many good news stories coming out of Hollywood right now. It's, so it, it's interesting how we're able to kind of like be symbiotically supportive of each other. Um, the other thing that I think is maybe more of a worry for Hollywood is that you guys enter into a contract with HPOA once a year, but you could elect to um, sever that contract and go your own way. I mean, it's only a, an, it's renewed annually. And if that were the case, we would, we would lose two staff. So basically two staff are paid for by virtue of having this um, service agreement. 
So, um, I mean, that's a stability issue, basically. Mm -hmm. Not that no one seems like they're ready to go off the reservation, but it does create in a sense of instability, I think. I think we need to look at pros and cons mm -hmm. yeah. and then weigh it, because I'm not opposed to it. I'm just thinking, you know, devil's advocate and thinking, well, you know, we have two different regrets on death trust, mm -hmm. right? Probably two different visions for the two different areas, but the raison d'etre is somewhat clean and safe for the okay. most part. You know, All right. But you're right, the vision for where Sunset's going, which is Hollywood, is different. Mm -hmm. They are two different streets, just, you know, hop, skip, and a jump away from each other. Two different ones. Yeah. Make the decision of that are taken by the group that live on and around that. Yeah, so we we want you all to start talking to each other. We're also thinking about there should be like a little like uh, foreign exchange students, like you know, have a couple of the Hollywood board members come to Sunset and vice versa. You all get to know each other, so <laughs> you know, so we're not the only link. Um, so we hear some yeah. other opinions. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, franchise tax board. So we actually um, keep you informed on this. We um, talked with them today, and we have, um, uh, we were told by our analyst or our case manager up there that everything that they have asked for from us, they have to see uh, with respect to the reports from 2000, uh, I think it was 2004 through 2006, and the um, payment of the uh, past fees. Uh, associated with the tax returns that um, were not filed during those years. So I I hope by next this time next month we will have a, a letter from them that will um, indicate that our status has been restored. So if you have any problems, let me know. <laughs> really? Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we, we had a good phone call with them today, and we think we're okay, but oh, that's good yeah, to know. Thank you. That's the thing. Let me know. Yeah, it was kind of, I'll tell you later how that happened. It was kind of a weird a twist of fate, how we lost our tax exempt status with the Franchise Tax Board. And Adrian, I did inform the uh, city of LA because I do provide them a quarterly report. So I have not held this from anyone and I have kept this board informed. Just want you to know. Um, public Records Act requests. Uh, yes, continue to um, service Mr. Riskin with his requests. We work on these every week. So probably have about 45 pending, so um, uh, it continues to be um, uh, something that we take seriously to respond to requests from the public for information. And then finally, I did mention to you that it dawned on us that this is the 10th anniversary year of the Sunset and Vine bid. I guess technically we would think that that happens in like the third or fourth quarter because I think the city council created the bid in September of 2006. Um, so let's maybe through, through the marketing discussions or others we'll think about other than the poll managers or something else that you would want to do in kind of a commemorative meeting or party for the, or for the 10th anniversary. Yeah. I know that when Hollywood celebrated their 10th anniversary, we did have a dinner and we kind of did a, uh, like a, a video chronicling the, um, you know, before and after pictures that are pretty amazing when you look at something that's happened for 10 years. So let's kick it around and see if it's something you want to celebrate. I like dinners. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all I have. I guess uh, we are at the end of the road here. Next month, you need a journey.